It's Facebook. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So I'm going to ask everyone's apology uh, or, or for your forgiveness. Um, our wonderful sound and lights guy uh, got the weeks mixed up. He didn't realize we were already back. He's not Jewish, so he was a little confused about the holidays. Um, but he will be for the next Shabbat. He'll be here. So we are doing this a cappella, not a cappella, without sound, without mics, without yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. So hopefully Acoustic. you can hear on Facebook. Strip down. Acoustic. There we go. Yeah. What, 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 what are they called when they did those? It's a coffee house. There we go. Unplugged. 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 That was the term I was looking for. So, so this is Shabbat Simchas Torah Shemunet Seret Unplugged. Um, if you cannot hear on Facebook, please make a note of some sort. If you can, give a thumbs up so we also know that you can hear. I can be louder, um, as loud as, as is needed. The microphone. Oh, great. Okay. So we begin. And again, we don't have our lights up with, our, with all the words on, on the wall, but hopefully you know them or you have the prayer books that we have. So we begin our Shabbat. Are you guys mumbling to yourself? <laughs> We're talking about our favorite Jewish song. Strategizing. Oh, so that's scary. Okay, so we begin our service. At night, no, we say the Hinei Matova, good enough to dwell together as brothers and sisters in the same building. We're back in a building. We're out of the sukkah. Oh, yeah. um, so we begin with Hinei Matova. Hinei Matova, Nai, Shemera. Wish each other Shabbat Shalom from a nice social distancing. Wave to each other, no hugs. Wave to each other on Facebook. We begin with lighting the candles. I'm going to ask that the Pussel family please come up. Because you have an upcoming bat mitzvah. Not quite yet, but soon. And light the, this is the holy Purell. That's not cool. No, no, it really is. It came all the way. That's actually Purell that they used at the Sea of Reeds when Moses and the sea split. Then why does it say Purell? <laughs> Is it kosher? Yeah, of course it's kosher. <laughs> They're childproof. Someone have a lighter? <laughs> Someone have a lighter in their car. I'll go out there. Maybe we can rub those sticks together. Yeah, it's, 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 Let's see, Manu, Leha. 
as we welcome the angels of peace to be with us now and throughout the year, this week and throughout the year, with Shalom Aleichem. Thank you. Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem HaShalem, Aleichem. children if you are at home please put your hands on your children as well as we bless our children it's so so important on Shabbos especially this Shabbos that we bless our children we bless our spouses that we truly bless them for all good things may God bless you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah may God bless you like Ephraim and Menashe May the Lord bless you and always protect you. May God lift up God's countenance, being kind, gracious, compassionate with you in every place, in every time. May God bless you with good health, with mental health, emotional health, physical health, spiritual health, with wisdom, with courage, with parnasa, with prosperity, with fun, with joy, with sisterhood, with brotherhood with compassion, with passion, with integrity, with courage, with gentleness, with strength, with love, and always with peace. Can you hear that song? Boys, you're watching right now, and we will do that later, as we always have since they were in the womb. We continue our service on page 38, as we continue with the bridal song between God and Israel, L'Chadodi. And Benny's got a new guitar for this, too. New Year. New Year. Oh. That's got to turn on. La 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 la
Light our fires up, you pastor. We rise. If you're at home, please stand and rise and face your door. The door that we enter in, the door that the Shekhinah comes in. We believe that every week, all week, the Shekhinah wanders in loneliness. She wanders waiting for us to really accept her, but on Shabbos she rests. On Shabbos, she pauses and she comes into every community where there's joy and love, every family that welcomes her. And like all brides, she brings blessings, all good blessings. And so we welcome her as we say, but we kalak, we welcome her to come. of the night, the holiness of the week, the holiness of the Shabbos, the holiness of the holidays, and the holiness of those days that are holy, but not holidays per se. We turn to page 51. There are those who say this is the most important piece of liturgy, because it is the first thing that God did is create separation between the night and the day, between the dark and the light. And so we read responsibly in the middle of the page. Praise to you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, whose word brings on the dusk of evening. Your wisdom, O Lord, is the gate of dawn. Our understanding, our regular time, 
The stars above follow their appointed rounds in response to your divine will. You remove the day and bring on the night. You separate one from the other. May you rule over us as you rule over nature. Praised are you, O Lord, who brings the evening dusk. El Chai Bekayam, Tamilik Lelam Bahed, Arukatar Naham Arib, Arabi. Before we say the Shema, we must accept God's love. You know, we just finished Sukkot. How many of you, all of you, I think, I think all of you at one point or another came to the Sukkot, right? This was a small year. We only had about 130, 150 people who came to the Sukkot this year. Um, where the past years we've had three, four hundred run through the whole thing. But, uh, for obvious reasons. But Sukkot, Sukkot is this wonderful holiday where after Yom Kippur, it's like shooting us up to the stars. We get to live in a sukkah, in a temporary structure. And realize that God is our protection. We realize God's love. You look up through the, the skaf, the palm branches, and you see the sky and the stars at nighttime. It's so loving and so beautiful and so magnificent in so many ways. And I am so glad that it's now over. Because <laughs> I'm tired. I finally woke up when we started singing Lechad um, Odi. It's, it's, it's so magnificent, and we want to carry it into the whole year. You know, there's this 10-day period. Rosh Hashanah, we're starting with just the week, the, the physical world. By the time we get to Yom Kippur, we're purely in the spiritual world. It's between us and God. And then we come back down through the days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, through Sukkot to tonight. Shemini Yetzer. Where we come back into the physical world, hopefully with the consciousness of keeping that spirituality we've had for the last few weeks, all the way through this coming year. And just as we get tired, we forget about things, we get another holiday, whether it's Tu B'Shvat or Purim or Pesach, to remind us of what's special. And so, for a moment, contemplate the beauty since Rosh Hashanah to now, how you've experienced God's love. And if you can't think of anything else, think of the fact that we did high holiday services. Okay? And we did them and got done. And if you don't believe in God, if that doesn't make you believe in miracles, it should. Okay? Uh, so, for a moment, think of that. And from there, once we really realize how much God loves us, even when we're feeling tired, even no matter what the feeling may be, from that place, and only from that place, can we really say that God is unified? Can we accept this prayer?
say it every week, I say it every service. But I believe this next prayer is so important. No time is more important than right now. 5780, the year we finished, was so filled with darkness. So filled with darkness in so many ways. But 5781, Hashem, with God's help, will be so filled with even that much more light. The idea is that we are Jews and we have faith that the darkness leads to light. That the war leads to peace. That God always spreads over us a sukkachlomachaga, of his peace, a spreading of his peace. If you do not know the words, you can just sing hey ho. And close your eyes and open them. But let us all pray that the darkness is now dissipating into a new light, into a dawn, into a beauty. want that light, you need to reach for it. We need to reach together. Open our hearts to let the world be a better place for our children and our children's children. We must allow that peace. Six with the hot seat cottage before we do it's it's such a new year benny has a new guitar and matt has a new toy <laughs> his toy likes the whole percussion section over there i think you're a gong player <laughs> we continue on page 66 with the hot seat kaddish you've got all the you got a shamera Israel. 
Bhagala Bhagala Umismahakari Vimeru Vishmera Bhavemora Layala Bhagala Maya Yidvara 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 Please rise. The Amida. Prayer that is so, so powerful. This first line of Nice of a Taiti Taku Fiyakiti Latafa does not mean the way it's translated. It does not mean, O oh Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. What it actually says is, God, open my lips and cause my mouth to praise you. The idea being that we become empty so that we can hear God's verse, God's words through our own mouth, what God wants for us.
continue on page 74 with a prayer for peace. Shalom. Shalom Yisrael So this is a special, special service in a lot of ways. As you know, this table is not normally here in the evening. In fact, this is the only time we will put a table here in the evening. The buffet. The buffet. <laughs> That's right. We didn't have a buffet in Yom Kippur, so we might as well have it now. Um, so this is Shemini Atzeret tonight. It is a biblical holiday. It is after Sukkot. You might have noticed in the Amidah that we said this line, Mashiv Haruach Amari Gashem, you cause God, you cause the wind to blow, the rain to fall. We now, now that we're out of the sukkah, now we pray for rain. Not just physical rain, but rain in terms of prosperity. Rain in terms of good health. Rain in terms of children. Rain in terms of love. All the good things that rain brings. There's a beautiful story of Honey, the, the water drawer, the circle drawer. He's in a town where he goes, he's a holy man, he goes to a town and they've got no rain. So he, he stands in a circle and he says, God, make it rain. God, I'm not leaving this circle till you make it rain. It starts to a little piddle. He says, God, I didn't ask for a little piddle. I asked for rain. And all of a sudden it starts to downpour. Just this big downpour. Just, God. That was the piddle. <laughs> and then he says, God, not this much. This is too much. A gentle rain. And it's a gentle rain. Like that. And the Talmudic sages, they say that, you know, if he wasn't so in love with God, this would be arrogant. Because he prays to God like a child asking his father for Legos. I'm not sure why that came up. But, um, <laughs> but the point is that we need to ask for things in love and in faith. Knowing that, like any good parent, God will give us what we need. Exactly what we need, when we need it. So we have these prayers for him. Now, tomorrow night is actually the newest holiday other than Yom HaTzma'ud and Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaShoah, the Israeli independence and, and the Holocaust, is the newest holiday in the Jewish calendar. It's tonight, tomorrow night is actually Simchas Torah, where we renew Sim. It was created in the Middle Ages. Um, it's when it became an actual holiday. And because of all that's going on in the world, we're combining both tonight. Uh, so that we're doing all of that in Shabbat. It's kind of the S night. Shabbat, Simchas Torah, Shemini Yetzirah, you know, that, those kind of things. No, there's no shrimp on the buffet. So, so I'd like everyone to please turn in your prayer books to page 515. Praise to you, Lord of God, and God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, God of Sarah, God of Rebecca, God of Rachel, and God of Leah. Great, mighty, and exalted one, you bestow loving and kindness upon all your children. You remember the merits of our ancestors and lovingly offer redemption to the descendants in accordance 
with your great name. You are our sovereign and helper, our savior and protector. Praise to you, O Lord, shield of Abraham, sustainer of Sarah. Eternal is your power, Lord, your salvation embraces the living and the dead. Now we have this, these lines. You see them on the bottom of page 15. And at the end of each line, there's something that the kahal, the community, is supposed to scream out together to remind God that God made commitments to our ancestors. And so we want to remind God, hey, God, you made this commitment to them. Keep it with us. Okay? Remember God, a God and God of our ancestors. Remember Abraham who flowed towards you like water. You blessed him like a tree planted by streams of water. You shielded him and saved him from water and fire. You cared for him when he sowed by all streams of water. That was pathetic. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. There's enough people in here. Wait, Let's try it again. Page, page 515. Oh, 515. You cared for him when he sowed by all streams of water. For his sake, he did not withhold water. Remember Isaac, whose birth was foretold over a little water. You told his father to sacrifice him, to shed his blood like water. Isaac, too, was diligent in pouring out his heart like water. He dug deep and discovered wells of water. For his righteousness sake, grant abundant water. Remember Jacob, whose staff in hand crossed the Jordan's water, who with wholehearted faith he rolled the stone from the well of water. He wrestled with an angel, a prince of fire and water. Therefore he promised to be with him through fire and water. For his sake, do not withhold water. Remember Moses and the ark of reeds drawn from the water, who later drew from the well and gave our sheep water. And when your chosen people thirsted for water, he struck the rock and there came forth water. For his righteousness' sake, grant abundant water. Remember Aaron, who on Yom Kippur bathed five times in water. He asked atonement for sins and washed his hands in water. He read from the Torah while he sprinkled the cleansing water. He was kept at a distance from a people as unstable as water. For his sake, do not withhold water. Remember the twelve tribes whom you brought through the parted water. You sweetened for them the bitterness of the water. For you, their children, were ever prepared to shed their blood like water. Turn to us, for we are encircled by foes like water. For the sake of righteousness, grant abundant water. Remember Miriam, who kept watch from the shore of the water, beloved by whose heart the well flowed with water, leaving Egypt with timbrels, sure she would sing by the water. Her death atoned like the heifer's ashes in water. For her sake, do not withhold water. For you are the Lord our God, who causes the wind to blow and the rain to fall. For a blessing and not for a curse, and together we say, Amen. For life and not for death, and we say, Amen. For abundance and not for famine, Amen. and we say, Amen. Simchat Torah. That's actually the main part of Shemina Tzara. So. Simchat Torah. Now, what we normally do, as those of you who have done this before in our community, what we normally do is we move all the chairs out. Everyone dances with the Torahs. We do the seven dances like that. And then we wrap, we put everyone in a circle facing out, we wrap the whole Torah around everyone, right? And we all point to Yad and we point to a word. And that one word is our kavanah, our intention for the year. And that's probably not a great idea to do right now. Okay? But if you would like to dance with the Torah, if you were comfortable with that, I'm going to ask you if you're on that side, if you can go over there. If you're on this side, if you can come on over here. If you're comfortable dancing with the Torah, when we take her out, and then we'll do some Torah reading, as we always do. The Torah's been quarantining since Yom Kippur. It has been, and, and you know, it gets changed tonight. It changes clothes. Ah. Tonight we change it. It's going out in white. It's coming back in the yearly blue. By Hebrew Sarah, the Yomir Moshe, as we open the ark. Whenever the ark moved forward, Moses would exclaim, Arise, O Lord, and may your enemies be scattered, may your foes leave before you. Kumar Nai Vyaputu Oifecha, Veyanusu Mesanecha Mipanecha, Ki Mitzion Tetse Torah, Ki Mitzion Tetse Torah, Udavar Adonai Mirushalayim, Abharachami, Etiva Bitson Chayet Zion, 
Tivne homos Yerushalayim. Tivne homos Yerushalayim. Ki becha levad betachnu, melech aram ben Isa, Adon olami. For you alone, God, do we trust, exalted God and sovereign, ruler of the universe. Deliver us, Lord, we implore you. Prosper us, O Lord, we implore you. Answer us, O Lord, when we call. So, if you are, anyone want to be dancing with Torah? Okay, come on. Come on over that side. Come on over that side. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Are you here or are we... So I'm going to bring it down here to you. Let's go! Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> This is the tree of life. This is what it is all about. God of all sorts, souls deliver us, search our hearts, prosper us, mighty redeemer, answer us when we call. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, 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 Deliver us, arrayed in splendor, prosper us, everlasting and gracious God. Answer us when we call. Move around. Move around. Move around. Pure and upright one, deliver us, comforter the pure, prosper us, good and benevolent God, answer us when we call. Mighty and resplendent, prosperous, clothed in righteousness, answer us when we call. Eternal 
Corbin, deliver us, illustrious and majesty, prosperous, supporter of the falling. Answer us when we call. the needy, deliver us, redeemer, deliver, prosper us, rock of eternity, answer us when we call. Oh, dear Lord, shalom, aleinu. 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 God, deliver us, merciful and compassionate one, prosper us, keeper of the covenant, and answer us when we call, upholder of the innocent, deliver us, mighty and revered one, prosper us, perfect in your ways, answer us when we call. It takes a year to recite. 
and then we start all over again. The last letter of the Torah is the word Yisrael. The last letter is the Lamed. Lamed is a very, very special letter. The word itself, the Lamed, means to study. But all of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet, either there's a line, and they're either above the line or they're below the line. Lamed is the one letter that goes above the line, through the line, and below it. Because when we study, we are affecting our physical world in the lowest level and our spiritual world in the highest level at the same time. Very, very important. The first letter of the Torah is the letter Bet or Vet. For Reishi in the beginning. And if you take the last letter, Lamed, that L sound, and then you put that Vet, that Bet, right after, it spells the word Lev. It spells the word Lev, which means heart in Hebrew. The idea is that the Torah is our heart and that our heart connects the Torah. There is no anger in Torah. There is no rage in Torah. There is no vengeance in Torah. My Maimonides teaches that if you see those things in the Torah, it is you, it is not her. There's only love. And so, we read the last line and the first line. We're going to use two Torahs tonight because we're not going to wrap it around everybody, which is beautiful. And so, Bezrat Hashem, next year we will be able to. And so, if I could, uh, Benny, would you come give me a hand with this? Or Matt, one of you guys can Take off the mantle. Just take off the, her mantle. Thank you. Can you take that too, please? I don't need my glasses. Baruchu and I have a Baruch and I have a Kalam, Baruch Atar and I have a Hino Makolam, a Shabar Ban Mikolam, even at Alan with Toroto, Baruch Atar and I know Sena Torah. Amen. But look, come that be all the Israel, and there never arose another in Israel, Kamosha, like Moses. A Shayadar and I, Panaim El Panaim, that new God. Face to face. L'chol ha'otot. And it with all of the signs. V'ayz metim. Asher shalcho. And all of these signs and all the miracles and wonders. Asher shalcho Adonai. That God sent forth. L'asot. To do and to make and to show. And to do for. Ba'eretz Mitzrayim. To do in the land of Egypt. L'pero. For Pharaoh. For the whole of Dov, and for all of his servants, for the whole art so, and for the land itself, for his land. The whole Hayad, Azakal, the whole Achol, Hamora, Agadol, the Ashera Se and for all the things that with a strong hand, and for all of these things with a great power, a great teaching, that were done and made. Moshe, and I, he did all of these things. In all of these places, Moses did in the eyes, Kol Yisrael, of all of Israel. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Mekola, Moshe, Natan Lan Torah Samet, Vechayi Enoch Lam Natah, Betochinu Baruch Atah Adonai, Nosein HaTorah. Amen. And we immediately come to this one. If we could, if I could get a hand again, please. Who had a name, Rock? 
Baruch Adonai 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 and there was a darkness that could not even be seen, only was there, it was an absence, it was a full darkness, on the face of the depths. And the Spirit of God, he, the Spirit of God moved very quickly and sparked on the face of the waters. And God said, there will be light. And there was light. And God perceived the light, because it was good. The Avdel Elohim, and God separated between the light and the darkness. And God called or and God called to the light Yom day. And to the darkness, he called evening. And there was evening and there was morning. Yom Achad, day one. Baruch Atar, and I will hear him a column of Shirna Tanana Torah, and that the Rayo Lon, the Tabar, Hainu Baruch Atar, and I know Saint Hatora. These are the words of God. You know, she came out for the last month since the beginning of Elul. Her Torahs have been in white, the color of bride. We'll talk about that in a minute. But now we go in, it's the, we've had Rosh Hashanah, we've had Elul, we've had Rosh Hashanah, we've had Yom Kippur, we've had Sukkos, and now we have Simchas Torah. And now we've got to live. You know, it's easy. You're preparing for the wedding. The wedding happens. You've got that honeymoon period of a week and a half, two weeks, however long, your vacation to Hawaii or your cruise or whatever it is, to Vegas, whatever it may be. And so we put her back, but we change her clothes. So if you guys would come give me a hand, please. You guys can do that one. I hope I have them prepared right. Rabbi, yes. How long do you keep the blue on? Until the Lul, the month before Rosh Hashanah. And we change to white. And then we come and do this again. And then I'm going to ask you to for, for, you and rest her, get to dress her back. One size fits all. No, no, no. These are these. There's tailored. For, each of these is tailored for the actual Torah. They're different. They're different sizes. We're going to put it back down. Your big suit out. Where would you kind of? this on film? I know. He's a, He's a single guy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're going to get him married off eventually. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm going to, I can't talk behind the table. So I'm going to try and Send this to me, Orlando. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. What is all this about? What is she about? Why do we love her so much? The person who who doesn't even know Torah, doesn't know what's inside it, and yet somehow she comes out and a part of them, their heart opens up. Remember my grandma, God rest her soul, she was in her, I think this was her 92nd or 93rd birthday. You know, 4'7 with 6 inches of hair, you know the kind of grandma, right? Had to go to the beauty parlor every week, come on, you know what I'm talking about. And her father and his fathers before him had been rabbis in Russia, 
in Shnigav. And it was her birthday, and we went to temple, to a friend's shul. And he called her up for a birthday blessing. And he said to her, you know, Rose, after 92 years, whatever it was, it was 90-something, and remember, she grew up in a world where women weren't touching the Torah. He said, after 92 years, I think the Torah would be proud to be held by you. So here's this little old Jewish woman with big hair. And he gives her the Torah, and I'm, I start schwitzing, because it weighs more than she does. <laughs> so I get my hands on her, and she goes, I got it! Because it, she gives us strength, the Torah. So, so important. And she teaches us something that we should all do if we are married. All do if we are married. We read the Torah all year. And then on tonight, we read the last line and the first line. But what is Torah for us? Torah is a ketubah. It's a ketubah. It's a wedding contract. It's a wedding contract between God and the people of Israel. It's got all the rules that we need to have a healthy relationship. All the rules, all the guidelines, all the beauty that we need to be able to live successfully with our partner. And like any partnership, any marriage, God forbid we don't stay true to our partner. It doesn't usually work out so well, does it? In fact, I think we can say, I don't like saying always or never, but it never works out so well, God forbid, right? When we as Jews are faithful with Torah, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Our partner takes care of us. But we need to remember and be aware of the ketubah, of the wedding contract. This is one of the two marriage nights that we have in our calendar where we remind ourselves to look at the ketubah. Does anyone remember what the other one is? Shavuot, Shavuot. We read the Ten Commandments and study all night. She is all the guidance that we need to live a good life. Everything. And yet we turn our back on her, don't we? And yet, despite that we have seen historically that every time we are true to Torah, we do okay, and every time we assimilate and we stop being Jews, very shortly, within a couple of generations, what happens? Nothing good, right? She is our blessing. But we need to stay true with her, too. And that doesn't mean suddenly you should all, everyone should suddenly observe all 613 commandments. That's not what it means. Someone asked a friend of mine, Ronnie Sayre, once, they said, Ronnie, how do you become more observant? And he made a great line, he said, very slowly. So what I want to suggest to everyone is that tonight, make a commitment to yourself, to God, and to this wedding contract. Make a commitment to take on one more mitzvah this year that you don't normally do. One more good deed. Doesn't matter what it is. Light Sabbath candles. Have challah. Decide to bless your children once a week. Decide to bless your wife once a week. With Eshes Chayel, the last chapter of the book of Proverbs. Take on one more commitment. That's all. Not asking for a lot. But to take one more step that is in harmony with this ketubah. Because here I promise you, taking on that one step, and I don't make promises easily. My boys can tell you that. My wife can tell you that. Because you don't break a promise. I promise you, you take on one more mitzvah this year that you haven't normally done. It will make your life better. It will give you solace when you are in pain. You won't even know it has anything to do with it. Suddenly you decide you're not going to eat shellfish. And who wants to anyhow? They're insects. 
Think about it. And then you've got calamari, which is an inside-out insect. Who wants to eat it anyhow? See? Ugh. That just kind of ruined your fried calamari, didn't it, guys? So, right? One, one more minute. Even doing that will change your whole life in a positive way. Because you're saying to our, your partner, you're saying, you know what, I am committed. I am committed to our relationship. I will be there with you, and I have faith. You will be there with me. It is our wedding. You know, there's a number of ways of interpreting the yud Hey vav and Hey, the four-letter name of God. One is from a linguistic standpoint. The two middle letters are the, the Hey and the Vav. This is the YHWH, Jehovah, Yahweh. We call it Adonai, my master. The two middle letters are the Shorsh, are the root. It means for the verb to exist. When you put a Yud in front of a verb in Hebrew, it makes it future tense, masculine. When you put a He at the end of a word in Hebrew, it makes it past tense, feminine. That means that the Yud, He, Vav, and He, from a linguistic point of view, is the simultaneous conjugation of the verb to be in masculine and feminine, future and past. And so one interpretation of God's name is it is male, female, past, present, future, all at once. It's pretty good. But there's another one using gematria. Gematria is a, an understanding that numbers equal letters. And the numerical value in Hebrew of the word for love, ahava, is 13. The numerical value of that yod hey vav and hey is 26. Yod is 10, hey is 5, vav is 6, hey is 5. So it's double love. And so our sages teach that when we can experience God's love for us and we can experience our love for God, then we understand God's name. This is the ketubah. It is our choice to honor it or not honor it. But again, I promise you, the more we honor it, the more our lives are fuller, deeper, richer. It doesn't mean there's not going to be pain, God forbid. But it means that what we really know on a deeper level is love. My prayer for all of us as we go into this new year is that we honor this ketubah a little bit more. That we know and experience God's love. Does that mean I'm, going to, you're, I'm done? That means I'm done. So, <laughs> that, we're so formal here. So <laughs> that we know and experience God's love. My prayer for us is that we experience it, we know it, we live it. And in doing so, we reap the benefits of a love that is truly, truly everlasting. Amen. Hold on, I've got to put you back up here. And I love you so The people ask me how How I've lived till now I tell them I don't know I guess they'll understand How lonely life has been Life began again The day you took my hand And yes, I know How lonely life can be The shadows follow me And the night won't set me free But I won't let the evening get me down Now that you're around me And you love me too Your thoughts are just for me Set my spirits free I'm happy that you do 
the book of life is brief once the page is read all but love is dead this is my belief and yes I know how loveless life can be the shadows follow me and the night won't set me free but I won't And I love you so The people ask me how How I've lived till now I tell them I don't know Not just musically, which we all know, but they are such holy men in so many ways. Um, some quick announcements before we put the tour back. Uh, we have class on Monday night. It will be live streamed as well as live. I, see, I think we may just live stream. We'll, you'll get an email. I'm not. Well, we'll do it live this week as well. We'll do live and live stream. It's going to come. Uh, and Sunday, 3 o'clock. Sunday at 3 o'clock. Sunday at 3 o'clock. Did I say Sunday at 3 o'clock? Uh, thank you. Three, three o'clock, right? Three o'clock. Three, whatever. Three o'clock. Uh, everyone is invited to join the men's club taking down the community sukkah. The more people, faster it goes. Okay, so please bring your, your hearts and your, your homes. Jim, would you come give a hand and come pick this up? Would everyone please rise? And by the way, you know, we have four Torah scrolls as well as a Holocaust Torah. It's just kept, it's not kosher, it's kept in a display case. They are not, they're kept in my home for insurance purposes. They are not my Torahs. They're everyone's. If you ever feel like you need a Torah in your house, Call me, email me, pick up the Torah, you keep it in your house. Anything happens to it, God forbid, you're responsible. But it is everyone's Torah, not just the rabbis, ever. It is for everyone. There was no Hebrew test upon getting the Torah. She's a tree of life to all who hold fast to her. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. Her paths are paths of peace. She is everything we need to guide us through this world. We can be wise and listen to the guidance. We're fools and ignore it. But it's always better to be wise, isn't it? She truly is filled with love and miracles. It's Chaim.
eat it. The Shabbat is the prayer that the one who blessed our ancestors blesses us and those who need healing. If there's someone that you wish to call for their healing on Facebook, here I ask that you rise so we can call out their names. Not who you're thinking. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not who you're thinking. Anyone else? What are Lori's, Lori's mom? Pray for the healing of all of those who have been sickened by this virus or its ramifications, the laws surrounding around it, the problems around it. All those who have been injured in the heart and their minds, all of those who have been injured in acts of war, terror, foreign and domestic, all those who have been injured in defending Israel or America. All those who have no one to pray for them, we pray that they may receive a quick and speedy Lema, a healing of their mind and of their spirit. with the Aleinu. We rise for it. It means literally that we, will take, we shall take upon ourselves what we have learned, what we have experienced tonight. We take upon ourselves all of Torah in joy and in love.
you have your excuse. When is always at a wedding? Why? The wine of the ketubah signing, the wine of the first cup under the chuppah, the wine at the end of the, of the seven blessings, the whining of all the other people who have come. <laughs> now, wine is this very sacred partnership. God makes grapes, we make it into wine. We need God's grapes, God needs our effort. It's just like Torah. And so please rise as we do Kiddush. For obvious reasons, we're not passing out little cups. So everyone's more comfortable. As we do, our Kiddush. Baruch Atarunai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddishonu B'Mitzvot Averat Zavanu B'Shabak Kosho Be'Ava Uvrat Soni Milanu Zikaron L'Maase Bereshi Ki Hu Yom Tehila L'Mikrae Kohelet Zechel Etziyat Mitzrayim Ivanu Varta, Yotanu Kidashta, Mikohami, Yeshaba Koshecha, Yava Uratso, Inotanu, Barofata Adonai, Mekade. Please be seated. On page 124, we have Kaddish. Special Kaddish, not just to the Shabbat, because of Shemini at Sarah. It's also Kaddish because, Benny, you don't you remember about a month and a half ago we did a bar mitzvah by that, out in the house in the Guru by the pool? Yeah. Young man got bar mitzvah about, about a month, month and a half ago. His father died today. We're taught that if you die on a Chag, it's a very holy day. Go straight to heaven. Because rabbis are compassionate, pretty much. If it's anywhere near a hog, anywhere near a holiday, we count it too. But to die on Hashan Rabbah and Shemini I got the text message from his wife literally as I was walking in. I haven't had even time to call her. Life is precious. And we waste it, don't we? All too often. Better we should be tired from living it passionately. Kaddish, when we say it on an evening like tonight, is in memory of all of the people that we have lost. Not just the ones who are a year of mourning or who have a yard site. But because it is Shemini Yatzer, I asked if you have anyone you would like to remember to please rise to call out the names on Facebook as well as we go. Benjamin Bushkin, Asana Rabbit Bushkin. died in sanctifying God's name in defense of the United States, defending Israel. All of those who have fought for freedom, all of those who have died because of this virus, all of those who have died not because of the virus, but because of the secondary and tertiary things after. Remember all of those people, especially those who died defending freedom against
against terrorism in whatever form. But all those who have no one to remember them, we remember them. Because of the Shemini Yetzirah, I ask that everyone please rise. I have to make sure that everyone can say a full Kaddish. I'll say each word and we can repeat it back. For all of our ancestors, for all the ones we don't know, all those who have passed on, may the memory be a blessing. May we live in a way that brings our ancestors pride, honor, our teachers, our teachers' teachers. That we live in such a way that their death is truly a blessing for peace. Yit Gadal, Bi Kadash, Shemei Rabah, Be'alma, Dira, Pirute, Be'amlich, Malchute, Be'chayachon, Be'yomachon, Be'chaye, Tichol, Beit Yisrael, Ba'agala, Be'bizman, Kari, Be'imru, Omen. Yehei, Shmei, Raba, Mevorah, Le'olam, Ulalamei, Almaya, Yisbarach, Yishtabach, Yipaar, Yit Romam, Yit Nase, Yit Adar, Yit Ale, Yit Halal, Shme, the Kiddusha, Burichu, the Ela, Mean, Kol Birchata, the Shirta, Tushbachata, the Nechamata, Damiran, Melma, the Imru, Amen. Yehe, Shlama, Rava, Min Shemaya, Vechayim, Aleinu, Be'al, Ko Yisrael, Ve'imru, Amen. Jose, Shalom, Bimromav, Hu, Ya'ase, Shalom, Aleinu, Be'al, Ko Yisrael, Ve'imru, Amen. May the one who ordains peace in the universe bring peace upon these souls, upon their families, upon their communities, upon this community. Please, God, peace upon this nation, peace in Israel, and for our children's sake, now peace in all the world. Together we say, Amen. Please be seated in Adon Olam, Master of the Universe. It means, it also means the hidden master. For God's love is sometimes hidden. His mastery is sometimes hidden, but it is always there. And so we celebrate with the donor. Shabbos ever until next week. And again, let us all experience God's love in every way.